Hey y'all, it's Betsy from Happily Ever After Etc. and welcome to another travel video. It is bright and early, you can see the sunrise in Lisbon, Portugal. So it's actually almost nine o'clock here, but they apparently have a very late sunrise. I've been eating breakfast, watching the sun come up and getting ready to go into town. We have a small cruise today, small cruise tour. We booked it through Viator. There's only five of us. So it'll be really nice compared to some of those bigger bus tours we've been doing lately. Um, we're gonna see the sights, go around the city, hopefully find a Pandora yesterday in Porto, Portugal. Our tour was only four hours. We did a half day tour, but somehow we still didn't get back to port until right when the ship was taking off. So we didn't get to go walking around or shop or look for Pandora, any of those things I really like to do. So we should have more time today. And since it's a private tour, should be more specialized. We should have more time to do the things we like to do. So we're very excited. I'm also very excited to show you the sunrise, but I'll turn y'all around there. The city is beautiful right behind you. Such a pretty view for breakfast. So past the sunrise, we have another ship and then the city. Let's walk over here and see it a little closer. Past all the eggs on the Serenity Deck. Of course, everything out here right now is a little wet and a little windy. So not really sitting on anything. Looks like you can get right off into town, so that's nice. Lisbon, Portugal, and of course this is the city capital. City capital, the country capital industrial cruise port and then the beautiful city so I guess we'll see what what we have to offer today hoping it's gonna be a really good day of course on this specific cruise our second of the two we took on the Carnival Pride we have Port de Port de Port de Port de so we had Spain Portugal Portugal Spain can't even say it that fast Spain Portugal Portugal Spain and of course that's because Portugal is just a little bitty country on the side of Spain. So we have four port days in a row and then we have a sea day. So go, go, go. Let's get off the ship and see what there is to see. All right, y'all, so the ship ported. We had to work all the way down here, but we are almost to the city. We're supposed to meet our Viator guide in the terminal, outside of the terminal, somewhere about the terminal. Usually they have a sign with mom's last name on it since she's the one who booked the tour. So I'm gonna see if we can't find the man or lady running our tour. The first stop is on the highest hill of our town. We call the Nossa Senhora do Monte Viewpoint. Point. And basically from there we can see almost every ancient part of the town. Be close to that dome, okay? okay? So this church over here with the dome, we call the Nossa Senhora de Santa Ingracia, or Saint Ingracia Church, and we use it today as the Pantheon. So in there we have like uh, dead celebrities. <laughs> okay. of the modern Portuguese story that were in some degree um, helped put our culture around the world. For example, do you know the Fado music? Probably heard it already. The Portuguese tradition style of music? No. So it's one of the things you have to do while you are in Lisbon. I don't know how many days you're going to stop in here. Just today. Just today. Okay. So I will present you which is father, basically. <laughs> Ooh, 
So it's like, um, how to say it? Our blues. Oh, okay. Okay, okay, it's a very emotional, um, full of pain kind of lyric sometimes. And Fado means fate or destiny. Mm -hmm. And we had the, the singer that we considered the best Fado singer of all times. Basically, she took Fado to all corners of the world and because of that she's buried inside with, along with poets, with historians, ministers, personalities like this. So it's like a wall of fame of cultural, cultural island. Yeah. So our tour guide, Diego, Diego? Yeah, Diego. Diego was saying that this castle up on the hill was the first thing built by the um, Venetians when they came. And then the city expanded from there. So all of these houses were built in that time period in the 1700s. And then slowly, 1700s, 1800s, 1900s, 21st century, the rest of the city was built. He said, especially in this area, in the 1700s, there was a giant earthquake and then tidal wave that wiped out a third of the population. So a lot of this square part, he said, was all rebuilt. So apparently we are going to go drive among all of this next. So we're going, the next stop is a quick stop. Is on the, I think it's one of the most important churches in our city. Basically inside we have the, the <coughs> remains of the body of our patron, Saint Vincent. And Saint Vincent has a legend related with ravens. And that's why our city is full of mentions to ravens and even in our coat of arms we have two ravens why so vincent was um one of the early catholics or christians during the roman empire and he was from where is today spain 
in that time only the name of the city was Zaragoza probably I don't know if you heard it so basically the guy refused to give up on the Catholic beliefs which is a kind of ironical thing because later in that century the Roman Empire became Catholic <laughs> so let's go figure but they torture heavily the guy and unfortunately he got killed and when the Romans starting to ask well what are we going to do with the body someone said well you can put the body in a desert to get devoured by vultures and other animals and according to the legend when the body was being surrounded by different scavengers out of nowhere two ravens descend from the skies and starting to shoot everyone and protect the body mm. roman seeing this said well uh, this is not on the plan so we need to get rid of the body again so they tied up the body to a rock and i will continue outside mm. so let's from outside walls right? this is the, the original name of the, ch the church from outside walls why when she was constructed it was outside of the defensive walls that surrounded the ancient part of the town so i was explaining the romans decided to well get we need to get rid of the body somehow so they decided to tie up the body to a rock and throw the body to the ocean but somehow the body was return to the shore and the Christians over there, these early Christians say mm, he was saved two times, his body is remaining so he's a saint, we need to be protected. So they decided to construct the first tomb in Valencia, okay, close to Barcelona. And the guy stayed there since a couple of centuries until we had the Muslims starting to invade the Abidin Peninsula and created the al Andalus Empire. So these more extremists starting to destroy some of the Christian sites and they were afraid the same thing that would happen to the body. So one travel guy said, mm, there is a corner on the western part of the Ibidan Peninsula that is called the Sanctum Promontory. The place is full of ravens. So by the logic thinking is it was saved by two, or oh, that is going to be saved forever. So they put the, boat, the remainings on the ship and sail all the way from Valencia to this point as we know today as Algarve, on the south of our country. And the body again was put on the site, they construct a little chapel and stay in there for a couple of centuries as well. How you reach from that point to Lisbon? Easy. In 1173, when our first king finished to conquer all the land and the Algarve from the Muslims, when he arrived to there, these first Christians said, well, we have a chapel with a saint over here. It's called the Saint Vincent. And the king was, hmm, that's interesting, because on the night before I attacked the city, I prayed to Saint Vincent to give blessings to the fight. And it worked. So I want his body, or his, the remainings of the body, back to Lisbon. So, poor guy, he traveled all the <laughs> well, he was yes. dead, yes, he was alive. So, and usually you think of ravens in a negative way. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, when the, because he was king, he ordered, so when the, the cruise ship was carrying the, the coffin with the remains of St. Vincent to the, the vessel, the same legend happened again, not from the skies, but from the cave. Two ravens descend and guarded the ship all the way from where is today the Cape St. Vincent, that is in the Algarve and to our city of Lisbon, okay? And that's why our coat of arms is going to sit on the front of the church.
I just want to go everywhere. Yeah, it's a spirit. <laughs> he packs a trailer like you do, Mom. This little car with all the stuff in there. <laughs> <laughs> I need that. This is the Pentium with the Hall of Fame with the dead celebrities, culture ones. It's going to start to appear on your right, left. Oh, yeah. It's another beautiful church. And the interesting part about this is it took almost three centuries to finish. These buildings are following the same pattern and the ancient walls of the Muslim. Some of these buildings are using the rocks from the walls as a foundation. And we're hmm. going to cross this tunnel. We call this the King's Fountain Gate over here. This was the main entrance of all uh, goods, visitors, and goods trading in that time. And another interesting thing is you have to imagine in that period, the river basically was where. It is two pipes. Okay. All okay. of this is land filled across the centuries. Oh, okay. It's not natural, it's man made. So, this was a natural harbor until the late 1600s when we started to landfill everything towards the river. So, in some times, I have to. I like to think in this way history repeats itself in a good way. In that time, it was good. Right now, it's the cruise ship terminal. So different matter or different things, the thing is repeating. So, we want to cross the level of the wall. You can see, we still have the, the marks where the locking system was in that time. This is the original shape. And that stones over there are 1100 walls. Oh wow. Where, Where the arch was. So Muslim walls. And all of this is original from that time. So the main the way this is constructed is from that period. Okay. So this we imagine was a very busy street. Carts coming in, coming out, people carrying things from the ships, for the ships. And one interesting thing is this set of stones that goes all the way. To the top. Oh yeah. So, give me your best shot what was the purpose of these stones. Breaking? Stopping? Very nice. Remind me your name? Nancy. Nancy, very good. Yeah, it's the ancient braking system from that time. Huh? Okay. We today we have the hydraulics in that time. <laughs> <laughs> they were yeah. They will do like a controlled descent step by step until the end of the street and the same thing if you want to climb. So was another interesting technology they had in that time to think and stop the car. Another thing, and this is more recent, so from the already had the Portuguese um, ruins. Do you see these carved shapes on the walls? Yeah. So this is okay. a sign that you're going to identify to reach the top. Okay? So every time you see the, the ships, you are on the path that's basically the main route. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the, the most important sign to to tradings was close to the castle. In the front of the castle we have a square that was the most, the most important market. So in the first meters it's easy to navigate. You're going to perceive 
this is a very kind of maze. Hey there, little pigeon. It's still easy to navigate. At the starting point toward the castle, the narrows become more Everything is more close to each other. So it's like a maze. And these scarf ships basically oriented everyone to the top of the castle. So our tour guide was explaining that the older tiles you can see from close up, but not from far away. So they would have the older tiles replicated, um, not necessarily hand painted, but replicated when they were doing restoration work. And that while it's more evident, of course, up front, when you get a whole section of them, you can't really tell the difference. He said, you can still get hand-painted tiles today, but of course they're much more expensive than the machine-made ones. All right, back on our walk. So he said, we are right under the castle right now that I showed you up on the hill in the older Venetian part of town. So this is the old city, the older buildings, said while you can update and modernize inside the buildings you're not allowed to do anything to the facades or the faces okay so he was telling us we we're just looking at these tiles that here on the ground you can see the marks from here to here this was the old city gate and the walls went all the way around the city so you can see on the map here right where we walked this is the gate we would have gone through if that wall was still standing. <laughs> that wall is so thick, y'all. Like, that's ridiculous. He said back when the fortress, the, the castle had a fortress around it, and the Portugal army was trying to take the castle and uh, make this Portugal, the only way they could get through that wall, couldn't, you had to do a siege, and they waited, I think he said 12 weeks for food and water and supplies to run out before they could get through those walls because they were so thick. We're just walking around Old Town. Gonna stop at a little coffee shop, but it's such a cute area.
going down Narrowest Street. <laughs> Definitely narrow. Can either go up or down, but can't do both at the same time. All right, now we're back down by the boat. Not sure where we're going next, but I guess we'll find out when we get there. constructed in the 16th century. To basically, the purpose was a defensive purpose. Uh, 
to defend the interests of the river from the ships, pirate ships and other enemy ships. The thing is, she became too small a couple of centuries, uh, centuries, decades after she was finished because the improvement of the navy uh, ships and ships were bigger. Yeah, so larger cannon. So she became an obsolete. And since that time, she was transformed in use for different things. She became as a defensive purpose, but later was a lighthouse to indicate the entrance of the river to the ships. And later it was used as a prison and a dungeon. Because, do you see where is the great car right now? The water was over there. She was surrounded oh, by water. Island. So it was like a mini Alcatraz. Oh. So was that filled in manually or was that over time? No, manually. Manually? Over across the centuries. And on the, the end of this street as well, you have to remember back in this time, so we're talking in, in 16th century, the beginning 1500s, all of here didn't exist pretty much nothing. Just a small chapel from the St. Geronimus and a small village. Basically, this development after we finished that huge thing over there, the St. Geronimus Monastery. Yeah, but trolleys or trams running. Yeah, cable cars, trolleys. It's like San Francisco. Yeah, yeah. You just want to be like San Francisco. San Francisco are. wants to be like them. This is the St. Geronimus oh, wow. Monastery. This beautiful building was starting to construct in 1501. And take a look uh, in your mind. The average time to build something like this in the 16th century is 100 years. We finished this in 21. Wow. Okay. Why? Wow. How? <laughs> So by this time, in 1497, when the Vasco da Gama convoy departure to discover the maritime route to India to have basically Portugal control the Silk Route but through the ocean, this was the starting point. So in 1498, we discovered the maritime route to India. 1500s, we discovered Brazil. And we, for almost one century, we are navigating and exploring the west coast of Africa. So you combine money from the silks, the spices, all the goods coming from Africa, and also you have to put, you can't block or cancel this. We have slaves as well. So combine everything. You have the money, the the power, and the slaves to finish something like this in just 21 years. <laughs> That's ridiculous. And so it was a monastery. Yes. So what happened to the monks? Yeah. They were expelled. No. Oh. So you in, go, you're not paying rent. In, <laughs> close to that. <laughs> <laughs> no, in the nine, so in 1828, we had the royal decree of expulsion of the male congregation and the female as well. So all the, the monks were expelled from the, the, the monasteries and the, the nuns as well from the convents until one century later. Okay, so we're right next to the monastery where the old monks were, and we are going to get a pastry. So apparently, in the old days, the monks from the monastery made special pastries, and when they were excommunicated, they gave this bakery the recipe. And so this is the only place where you can get the original recipe pastry. Not quite sure what to think about that yet, but the line is ridiculous. Our tour guide said, you don't have to wait in the line, but I don't know why. Guess we'll find out. Right, so we're back outside. There's the monastery. 
and here is the famous pastry shop. And there's the famous mom. I know, my lace is untied. No. All right, y'all, so obviously we are back on the ship. Yep. We are done in Lisbon, Portugal. So what do you think, Mom, one to 10? Oh, it was good, I'd say eight. I might say seven. I really liked it. The morning, I think, was my favorite part when we went all the way up to the top of the hill and we saw how the city was really distinctively developed over time from the 17th, 18th, 19th centuries all the way to the 21st. Um, what did we see after that? We went up that back alley to... Um, oh yeah, we walked through Old Town and Old all of Town. that. That was interesting. It was way less walking than yesterday. So, yes. 12 stars there. And we went to a cafe <laughs> and had a little drink. Well, everybody else had coffee. Mom and I don't drink coffee. We had Pepsi. Mm -hmm. And then it was on to find the local Pandora store and finished up at the monastery. So. Yep. I really liked our guide, another 31 year old guide, which is a little strange. This is the first time I've ever had such young dudes as a tour guide, but he, he did a really good job. So we will leave all the info down below, but for now we're gonna go find lunch on the ship. The ship's about to leave port, so on to the next place. Tomorrow is Seville, Spain? I think so, yeah. Another port in Spain, so we'll see y'all there. Bye. Bye. Wait, mom, I'm, I'm out of hands again.